Nothing can escape a black hole. Is all that matter crushed down into an infinitely dense, infinitely small point that we call a singularity? Or is something else going on? Annoyingly, under the laws of physics as we understand them, cosmic censorship says we'll never know what happens beyond the event horizon. Or will we? Because when we run the maths using Einstein's theory of general relativity, our best theory of gravity, and we sprinkle in a little bit of quantum mechanics, out pops the idea of naked singularities. Infinitely dense regions of space, but without an event horizon shielding them from view. Singularities that we might be able to see and observe to work out what does happen when matter crushes down to an infinitely small point. Now admittedly, naked singularities are still completely hypothetical. We haven't been able to find and observe a naked singularity out there in the universe yet, although there are some objects that have come tantalizingly close to looking like one. So in this video, we're gonna dive into all the details and first have a quick refresh on Einstein's theory of general relativity and black holes, then chat about what actually is a naked singularity. And then finally, are there any objects that we've observed that might be naked singularities? Because there's a lot of things that people misunderstand when it comes to black holes. For example, they are some of the brightest objects in the entire universe, thanks to the material that spirals around them, that gets hot and glows with light that we can detect and even see flickering. Like we recently saw for the Milky Way's supermassive black hole using the James Webb Space Telescope, which was reported on widely by the media, with the Manchester Evening News going with NASA telescope captures mysterious firework display from black hole in the middle of our galaxy as a headline or Reuters, with Webb Telescope observes violence around Milky Way's central black hole. I can compare these different headlines thanks to Ground News, the sponsor of this week's video that I've been working with for over a year now. What I love is that it's not just about seeing different perspectives. Ground News also gives me additional context that's especially valuable if you're someone who wants to say ground in evidence and science. On their app and website, you can see that 55 different news stories covered this story, with 89% of those sources having high factuality ratings. So I know straight away this is a genuine scientific story and not something that someone's made up for clicks on the internet, which let's face it, for JWST stuff, seems to be the norm. The feature of theirs that I use the most is their blind spot feed because I also find it so interesting to see like which stories have had little to no reporting on either side of the political spectrum. You get a really well-rounded picture of what's going on in the world. And I've heard from so many of you that you're loving Ground News as well, which is, I'm so excited that they're continuing to sponsor this channel. So if you head to the link in the video description below, ground.news slash Dr. Becky, or you can scan the QR code on screen, you'll get 40% off their Vantage plan, which gives you unlimited access to all the features that I've shown in this video. It comes out at around about $5 a month and those subscriptions help keep Ground News ad free, so therefore they're free of any of the bias that comes with paid advertising. So a big thanks to Ground News again for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to that quick refresh on Einstein's theory of general relativity and black. So general relativity is our current best theory of gravity that we have. It is not the only theory of gravity that my colleagues are working on. I have a whole playlist on alternate theories of gravity if you want to check those videos out. But currently it is the theory that best explains our observations of the universe. So what Einstein said was that the effect of gravity can be explained mathematically as heavy objects curving space. You can picture this like a bowling ball placed on the middle of a trampoline or like a cat curled up on a stretched out bed sheet. Any smaller objects that are traveling towards the bigger object then get their trajectories changed by the curvature of space. And if you get the angle just right, you can actually capture an object in a circular path on that curved space to put it in orbit around the heavier object. This curvature also affects light as well. So it curves around massive objects to create like a lens effect for the light from objects from much further away. So in this picture of how gravity works, when a black hole forms, when a star runs out of fuel and it dies, its core collapses, 
collapses because it's nothing to resist that crush of gravity down anymore. Space gets more and more curved as the matter gets denser during the collapse until it gets to that infinitely dense, infinitely small point that we call a singularity when space is infinitely curved. And general relativity can't explain mathematically what's going on anymore at that single point. You then form what's known as an event horizon, which is the sphere around the singularity where inside that the only path that light can take along that curved space is to end up in the singularity. I think a common analogy that our brains go to to try and picture this are those big ramps that people try to run up in Ninja Warrior or the gauntlet in Fourth Wing for all of my fellow fantasy fans out there. If you don't get enough speed up, you fall back down the ramp. So because light travels at a set speed limit of just under 300,000 kilometers a second, the event horizon marks the region where inside that you need to be traveling faster than light to escape the curve of space, the gauntlet ramp of the black hole. This is what's known as cosmic censorship, a term that was coined by Roger Penrose back in the 1970s. And it was Penrose along with Stephen Hawking that had shown that singularities were a natural occurrence and should be expected in the universe to occur but that they would also naturally have an event horizon. They wouldn't be visible to observers. Naked singularities couldn't exist. This is the hypothesis of cosmic censorship. Which brings me then to what is a naked singularity? Okay, so everything I just described about black holes and cosmic censorship comes from the maths of general relativity. But to get there, you first have to assume spherical symmetry, aka a nice smooth sphere that is symmetrical around that central point. So in two dimensions, for example, a circle is spherically symmetric because you can draw a line through the center of the circle in any direction and it will be the same on both sides. Take that into three dimensions with the sphere, then essentially any plane that you draw through the sphere that runs through the very center is always going to split it symmetrically. So if you're describing the collapse of a star with general relativity, the first thing you do is assume that the star is spherical, yes, but also that all the matter in the star is evenly distributed in all directions. That is a massively simplifying assumption, but it makes the maths infinitely easier, especially if you've just got a human with a pen and paper as it was back in the 60s, as opposed to like the supercomputers that we have nowadays. In reality though, stars are not perfect spheres. They're what's known as an oblate spheroid. That's the shape that Earth is as well. It's because everything is spinning. So they bulge out at the equator slightly thanks to the same physics that makes it feel like when you're on a merry-go-round that you're gonna go flying off backwards. And to top it off, the material is most likely not gonna be evenly distributed, right? The inside of a star is a very turbulent place. So there'll be slightly denser spots in places that are slightly cooler than the surroundings. Plus the center of a star will always be denser as well in its core where it's been fusing hydrogen into the heavier helium. And from there outwards, the density gradually decreases to the surface. And it was in the 1990s that people realized when they ran the maths for this, you know, not assuming spherical symmetry and then also taking into account the fact that there's like pressure pushing back outwards on the collapse as well due to the material in the star, that you could actually end up with a small section of the star that could collapse to become infinitely dense, a region that would still be visible to us as, you know, the surrounding regions of the star were still undergoing collapse. It's like the formation of that event horizon that would block our view is delayed until the collapse is complete. And if we go back and think about this in terms of the curvature of space, you've still got like the rest of the matter from the star that's not that dense, that's just sort of like gently curving space. And so on that surface, light can still, you know, travel around and in and out from an escape. You've just got one little bit that's become infinitely dense, but because of that gentle curvature around it overall, the light can still escape from it. So we can see that infinitely dense region. We can still see the singularity. This is what's known as a naked singularity and it breaks this idea of cosmic censorship. And if that does turn out to be a real thing in the universe, we could actually observe what happens to space as matter collapses down into that infinitely small, infinitely dense 
point. And it might even help physicists like crack this problem of trying to combine the physics of the very big with general relativity and the physics of the very small with quantum mechanics into what's known as sort of like a grand unified theory that's been eluding us for decades and doesn't allow us to make predictions for what happened in the first tiny fraction of a second of the universe or what goes on inside a black hole. So, are naked singularities purely hypothetical? Or are there any objects that we've observed that might be naked singularities? Well, the short answer is no. The long answer is that people have claimed maybe, but those claims are based on very uncertain models. Take for example GRO J1655-40, a binary system a few tens of thousands of light years away in the Milky Way. It's got a star that's a little bit bigger than the sun orbiting an unseen object which is stealing material away from the star and heating it up to huge speeds so that it glows in x-rays. In 2018, Chakravarti and Bhattacharya modelled this binary system and found that in their models, the mass and the spin of this unseen object that was part of this binary system actually favoured the idea of a naked singularity over a black hole. So they have three different models they applied to this data. One of the models allows all the solutions below the green dash line. Another model only allows solutions along the blue line. And another one only allows solutions along the red dash line. So looking where all of those models intersect gives you a solution that means that GRO J1655-40 would be a naked singularity and not a black hole. Whole. Sounds fairly convincing, right? But if they start fiddling with the parameters of their models and changing some starting points, then they end up with this, where all three model solutions don't intersect and there's no allowed solution, black hole, naked singularity or otherwise. So sadly, no, we have not found any evidence for the existence of naked singularities in the universe just yet. And that really is the big question for theoretical physicists. Because sure, with the maths, we've shown that you can get naked singularities if the conditions are right. But do those conditions actually exist out there in the real universe? But it makes the math, maths, makes the math infinitely easier, the maths in the center thanks to the same physics that means that when you're on a merry-go-round merry and it was in the 1990s that people realized that if you ran the maths that's another pip here bloody hell pip hairs everywhere probably for my own leggings they're black and they're absolutely covered 